Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to build the Paiute Deadfall Trap, which is hands down the most effective and efficient type of deadfall trigger system out there. If you were ever to find yourself in a survival situation, this is the type of trap that you'll want to know how to make. So this rock here that I'm perched upon is going to be our deadfall weight, and it is well over 100 pounds. Now this is going to be in contrast to most of those deadfalls that you've seen out there. Those small ones capable of taking down mice, rats, nothing larger than rodents. Now that's not because deadfalls are incapable of taking down larger prey. That's largely due to the fact that most of these people building these deadfalls have done so incorrectly. Now if you are flying your trigger system and there are a variety of ways in which you can make it incorrectly, you will never be able to scale up the deadfall to the point where you can take down larger prey. Talk about raccoons, opossums, coyotes, bobcats, those creatures that you would necessarily have to take down in a survival situation to get the meat that you need to survive. Let's take a look at the parts and pieces of this trigger system before we get it all put together. I understand you can assemble quite a bit of this before you get to your deadfall weight, but because you're messing with natural materials, you're likely going to have to tweak and adjust things once you're setting it all up. Now, the first three parts of your trigger system are right here. The largest, longest, strongest is your lever stick, and it is going to be bearing quite a bit of the weight of your deadfall. And here at the end, it's attached to a piece of cordage. This is yucca, a two-strand twist, 30-pound test. Use what you got. Now, if you follow that cordage down, it's attached to what's called the toggle stick. Now your fourth piece to this trap is called the fulcrum stick. And it is also going to be bearing quite a bit of the weight. It's going to stand vertically and it's going to be the pivot point for your lever stick. Now the last piece of your trap is rather disposable. This is your trigger stick and you might want to pick several of these because they have a tendency of breaking. This is going to be where you put your bait. It's going to be where the animal either bumps into it or grabs onto it to set off your trap. And because of that, because it's placed up underneath this large rock, it has a tendency of breaking. Before adding weight into this equation, I'm going to go ahead and show you how these parts and pieces fit together. Your first piece is going to be your fulcrum, and it needs to be vertical. Your second piece is going to be your lever, and it's going to fit and nestle down between the two tines of your fulcrum. This is going to give you lots of control, especially when you're dealing with really, really heavy deadfall weights. Now, I've seen lots of illustrations and demonstrations where they try and take the lever stick and they try and balance it on top of a single point. There's no gain. There's no reason to do that. If you can find one, get you a big, strong fulcrum. Make sure it branches out just like this. You'll be way better off. Now, right here is where a lot of people have issues putting this trap together. I see a lot of these lever sticks out here horizontal okay what they need to be is down here at a severe angle towards the earth and that's for two different reasons first off this piece of cordage the longer that piece of cordage is the more likely it is going to be to snap so notice how long it has to be right here as you bring it down towards the earth you have a lot more room so that's one reason secondly if you bring that lever stick up notice the angle that that cordage is going down towards at the end, when we're setting this, I need to make sure that that cordage is horizontal. Notice how it's just hugging the ground just like that. And that's for a big reason. As I bring the toggle back and around the fulcrum, put tension on it, just as you would with the weight, I'm nestling the toggle up underneath that horizontal piece of cordage. And I do that because this toggle has a tendency to want to draw down whenever it has weight put on the trap. And a lot of people try and get around that by putting the toggle on the ground and they have the trigger stick going up towards the deadfall and you lose a heck of a lot of the sensitivity. That's not the correct way to set up this trap. So once you have the tension on there, you put that toggle right up underneath that piece of cordage. We have the trigger stick going up towards the deadfall and that's going to be an extremely sensitive trap. Because at this point, even with 100 pounds of rock holding it up, it's just going to be this single finger keeping it all together. So once I let that go, once that trigger stick gets tripped, the whole thing comes apart. Another common mistake that I've seen people make with this trap is where they take an extremely long lever stick and they'll extend the point way on out past this fulcrum so that the deadfall weight is suspended out on this end. As you can probably tell, there's an immediate loss of stability here. It becomes very wobbly and you're going to spend a lot of time trying to get this fulcrum placed just right so that you get the balance necessary to actually set this trap. It takes more time, 
it's extremely inefficient. You're also limiting the amount of weight that you can put out here on this point. A lot of people try to get around that using the heavier rocks and what they'll do is put the rock up on end where most of the weight is going towards the base. And what that means is your trap might actually trigger off, everything fall down, but you're going to have an extra second or two as that rock comes down to crush the creature. And what that means is nine times out of ten, maybe even ten times out of ten, that extra second or two is plenty enough time for that creature to get the food and get away. So you haven't so much as built a trap as an extremely elaborate method of feeding forest creatures. So setting a trap this large is really a two-person job. But I'm going to go ahead and try and see if I can do it by myself. So wish me luck. Both hands. Up. All right. Nothing's broken yet. Most of the weight's being taken by my right arm. Let the weight off of it. Slide my stone over a little bit more. And there we go. First step complete. Now from here, it gets a little janky. And you might want to actually slide a big rock up under there so you don't smash your hand. But I'm going to take my tog, put it back and around my fulcrum real fast. Notice how quick I got my hands out of there. I'm going to slide it up and around. As you can see, I'm nestling my toggle up underneath a piece of cordage now. Just like that. That's going to keep it from sliding under. So I'm going to go ahead and start taking the weight away from my right arm. And at this point, the entire trap is being supported just by my left hand. From there, all we got to do is set our trigger stick from here up into the rock. I'm using bacon because we're American. Now, although the deadfall weight that I've been using in this demonstration is rather large, uh, the idea needs to be that in a survival situation, use what you have access to. So if you were to find yourself around a quarry with lots of different sized stones like I have here behind me, uh, within a few hours, you should have a lot of deadfall set, uh, all with different sized trigger systems. You want to set as many as possible because you want to play the numbers game. And don't put all your eggs in a single basket. Uh, set these with as many different types of bait as you can find as you really don't know what creature is going to show up first what they're going to be attracted to uh, there are a lot of variables that you just can't account for so in a survival situation set as many as possible practice the heck out of this uh, the more you do the faster you'll get uh, little things like having a survival bracelet can help out a heck of a lot uh, this one alone right here will make me uh, approximately 80 Paiute deadfalls of this size, so uh, that's definitely, definitely a time saver and it'll keep you ahead. But uh, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe, share the heck out of it, comment and tell me what you, what you think, and as always, until next time. For those of you curious about my Paracord survival bracelet, this is the Kodiak, made by Outdoor Element. That's got your emergency fire starter, which is a ferrocium rod right there. You also have about 12 to 15 foot of paracord, depending on the size of your wrist and which size you actually order. Now this has actually been changed out with Titan Survivor Cord. And if you're unfamiliar with Titan, uh, their brand, their products, go ahead and check them out in the link in the description down below. 
understand that every purchase made through that link of Titan actually goes to help this channel out. I've also embedded a few small fishing hooks inside of this webbing, uh, little pan fishing hooks. The idea being that no matter how well suited or how well designed a product is, you can usually find a way to make it even better. But uh, overall, I would definitely recommend this bracelet.